This video tutorial is all about exchange at the capillaries. I'm going to begin by um, introducing the blood plasma and tissue fluid, um, and then we'll look at movement of fluids. Blood is a fluid held in our blood vessels. It consists of a liquid called plasma, containing many blood cells. The plasma contains many dissolved substances, including oxygen, carbon dioxide, minerals, glucose, amino acids, hormones, and plasma proteins. The cells include red blood cells, also known as erythrocytes, various white blood cells, such as um, leukocytes, and fragments called platelets. Tissue fluid is similar to blood plasma, but it does not contain most of the cells found in the blood. Neither does it contain plasma proteins. Tissue fluid is formed by plasma leaking from the capillaries. It surrounds the cells in the tissue and supplies them with the oxygens and nutrients they require. As blood plasma leaks from the capillary, it carries all the dissolved substances into the tissue fluid. This movement is mass flow rather than diffusion. Waste products from cell metabolism will be carried back into the capillary as some of the tissue fluid returns into the capillaries. When an artery reaches the tissues, it branches into smaller arterioles and then into a network of capillaries. These eventually link up with venules to carry blood back to the veins. Therefore, blood flowing into an organ or tissue is contained in the capillaries. At the arterial end of the capillary network, the blood is at relatively high hydrostatic pressure. This hydrostatic pressure tends to push the blood um, fluid out of the capillaries through the capillary wall. The fluid can leave through the tiny gaps between the cells in the capillary wall. The fluid that leaves the blood consists of plasma with dissolved nutrients and oxygen. All the red blood cells, platelets, and most of the white blood cells remain in the blood, as do the plasma proteins. These are too large to be pushed out through the gaps in the capillary walls. The tissue fluid surrounds the body cells, so exchange of gases and nutrients can occur across the plasma membranes. The exchange occurs by diffusion, facilitated diffusion, and active uptake. Oxygen and nutrients enter the cells. Carbon dioxide and other wastes leave the cells. On the right-hand side of the slide are just a couple of images to represent this concept of hydrostatic pressure. If you were to fill a beaker of water and then make two holes, one at the bottom and one at the top, you would see that um, at the bottom, because there's higher hydrostatic pressure, the water would jet out and would move far further than um, the water flowing out of the hole higher up on the beaker, um, which is at lower hydrostatic pressure. The blood pressure at the venous end of the capillary is much lower. This allows some of the tissue fluid to return to the capillaries carrying carbon dioxide and other waste substances into the blood. However, not all the tissue fluid re-enters the blood. Some tissue fluid is directed into another tubular system called the lymph system or the lymphatic system. This drains excess tissue fluid out of the tissues and returns the blood system to the um, vein in your chest. The fluid in the lymphatic system is called lymph and is similar in composition to the tissue fluid. It will contain more lymphocytes as these are produced in the lymph nodes. Lymph nodes are swellings found at intervals along the lymphatic system. They are incredibly important and play a really key role in the immune response. This table just summarises um, what we find in the blood plasma, the tissue fluid and the lymph. 
In terms of hydrostatic pressure, hydrostatic pressure is far higher in the blood plasma than it is in the tissue fluid or lymph. In terms of oncotic pressure, it's more negative in the blood plasma than it is in the tissue fluid or lymph. We find lots of cells like the red blood cells, the neutrophils, the lymphocytes in the blood plasma, and only really some neutrophils in tissue fluid, and that will be mainly in infected areas. Um, and in the lymph, we just really find lymphocytes. With regard to protein, within the blood plasma, you'll see plasma proteins, and there's not really many proteins found in the tissue fluid or lymph. And finally, fats. Fats in the blood plasma are transported in lipoproteins. There aren't many flat fats in the tissue fluid, and there are more in the lymph, especially near the digestive system. Now we're going to look at movement of fluids. The hydrostatic pressure of the blood is not the only influence on the movement of fluid into and out of the capillary. The tissue fluid has its own hydrostatic pressure and the oncotic pressure of the solutes, so the dissolved substances, is also going to have an influence. Now the diagram on the slide in front of you shows the influence of these forces on the movement of the fluids. The hydrostatic pressure of the blood tends to push fluid out into the tissues. The hydrostatic pressure of the tissue fluid tends to push fluid into the capillaries. The oncotic pressure of the blood tends to pull water back into the blood. It has a negative figure. The oncotic pressure of the tissue fluid pulls water into the tissue fluid. The net result of these forces creates a pressure to push fluid out of the capillary at the arterial end and into the capillary at the venule end. Just to provide a few definitions, hydrostatic pressure is the pressure that a fluid exerts when pushing against the sides of a vessel or container, whereas oncotic pressure is the pressure created by the osmotic effects of the solutes.